Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am today's entertainment, and we are going to be taking a look at Thomas's Christmas Carol on DVD. So this was released in the U.S. digitally first, same as some of the earlier Universal releases on October 13th of 2015, and it was released on DVD on October 27th of 2015, and then there's a Walmart date on here. Um, it was released in Walmart on November 3rd of 2015, which is interesting, but I'm not going to question it. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. So um, let's uh, let's take a look here. So this poster art, it's very, very simple, but it's actually pretty cool. I like it quite a lot. So got the Thomas logo up there. We got the moon coming through the clouds there. We got a really, really nice logo up there. Thomas's Christmas Carol in a wreath. That's really cool. And I really like how simple this Thomas is. It's just a normal Thomas with a ribbon. No lights, no like decorations or anything. It's just Thomas with a ribbon. And that's really, really cool. And he's outside Napford Station. Yeah, this is a very, very nice cover. I like it a lot. On the side here, hit Thomas Christmas Carol. Blah, 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 blah. You know the drill. I believe this was the last DVD that I got in that um, big lot, what I call the slipcover lot. Let me look. Yep, last one. Which is kind of sad, but whatever. Oh, um, we got the Thomas logo up there again, delivering winter wishes. There's your small little description there. Um, yeah, and the bonus features there we have, there's snow place like home um, music video, and who's that engine? I mean, sure, but that's, uh, that's part of the release, like, that plays in between episodes, so I don't know why they would list that and not, like, any, any of the other bonus features, I mean, there's no Guess Who Puzzles on here, there's no Mr. Perkins for some reason, so I don't know why they didn't list this stuff, but whatever, and then we got season, like, 18, Thomas, with Diesel there. I don't know, that's a bit strange, but yeah. I don't know where this is. I believe that's outside Tidmouth Town Square, whatever, Tidmouth Town Hall. Weird, but whatever. There's the bottom right there, or there's all your stuff on the bottom right there, excuse me. Take off the slipcover. Just set it back on the stand there. Just the same poster art. Yep. Pretty standard. Yep. You can see right there, Disc Made in Mexico. I believe we've seen that before. Um, I don't remember on which releases, but I know we have seen that. And here is the disc. Cool. Alrighty. So let's throw this back in the slipcover here, and we'll take a look at the contents on this wonderful DVD. So the episodes on here are Diesel's Ghostly Christmas. I should probably just go to the episodes. There we go. Um, Snow Place Like Home, A Cranky Christmas, and The Beast of Sodor. And then on the UK and Australian release, you had um, Letters to Santa, The Real Car and the Coaches, and Love Me Tender. Because it was released in 2016 in Australia and 2017 in the UK. Alrighty, let's see here. Oh, we also have some bonus features as well. I apologize. Uh, we have Calling All Engines, Victor and Porter. The Earl quizzes us about Samson at your service, Old Reliable Edward. And he quizzes us about, like, what sound does Percy make or whatever. And then there is a new segment on here known as Landmarks of Sodor. So basically, Rob Brackstraw, um, he's pretending to be, like, some British guy. And he's basically giving a rundown of locations on Sodor uh, in, like, a 19... 50s, 1960s aesthetic, and it's really, really cool. Um, today, or in this release, or this segment, excuse me, he talks about the clay pits. And I love, love, love the amount of detail that went into this. They mentioned that the China Clay Company was founded in 1948, and I actually learned something new today. I never knew that China Clay was using toothpaste, of all things, but I looked it up, and it's... Pretty much true, so that's kind of interesting, but yeah. Alrighty, 
Got a lot to talk about here. Well, not a lot. We'll, we'll see. All right, Diesel's Ghost of Christmas. So, this is famous for being the first double-length episode of Thomas, and I think it was a really good idea to try this. It would become a normal thing in season 23 and 24, however, which I wasn't a huge fan of. That's basically um, taking away the annual movies and then just doing like three 20-minute episodes, which is kind of a waste to me. I mean, you could have just done a 20-episode season. Well, they pretty much did do that, but you could have spent all that time and money making a movie instead of three episodes, but... Oh, well. Um, This is a very nice plot to utilize for it as well. You can't really tell a Christmas Carol in 8 minutes and 45 seconds. And I think they use the 20 minutes to their advantage. Um, I also thought Diesel was a very, very good choice to use as the Scrooge character. He's very... I wouldn't say he's very in line with Season 2 Diesel, but... I'd say he's in line with, like, Season 6, Season 7 Diesel. Um, I love the little gag where when Sir Topham had slaves, pushes the cart up behind him, and then goes back to standing just as he normally does. He's just, I don't know, that's just kind of funny to me. Um, did Salty really move on his own? So, he couldn't shunt the flatbed over to Cranky because his fuel line was frozen. And there was somebody fixing it, but that that's one of the steam engine drivers, so... He didn't get back in the cab, so I guess Salty can move on his own. I mean, in Steam Team to the rescue, nobody jumps out of his cab when he falls into the ocean, so I assume that he goes by himself? Who knows? So, I think we're all in unanimous agreement when we say that the CGI series is not that great at being scary, but I will make an exception for this episode. It is one of the only CGI episodes that actually gives me goosebumps, the really eerie atmosphere in the music is actually a bit unsettling, and I really, really like that. We need more differing tones in modern-day Thomas instead of all light, happy. Sometimes the engines get upset, sometimes they get sad, and sometimes Sir Topham Head gets a little mad. Um, I love uh, when Salty asks Diesel if he remembers the last time he had um, helped somebody, and Diesel's like, what? Uh, he's like struggling to find an answer and thought that was kind of funny. Um, speaking of that scene, I really like the callback to Diesel Does It Again. It's a bit of an ex- obscure episode, but it's actually kind of important in the sense that it was the start of Diesel constantly coming back to the series and eventually becoming a regular. Um, let's just talk more about Diesel here. So this was the first season that Carrie Shell plays Diesel in the U.S. dub. And as much as I like his acting and his, like, energy, it's one of the few voices of the CJ series that I actually despise. It's so high-pitched and childish, and it's totally out of line with what his character should be. I mean, like I said earlier, it's clear that Carrie Shale is having a great time playing him, and there are some really great moments throughout the next few seasons, but the voice itself is grating. I really, really wish we had a deep, slow, sly voice like George Carlin and Ringo Starr gave him. Because Diesel is supposed to be very oily and actually extremely intelligent, and he should, like, pose a threat to the engines. Like, do you really think this guy right here is going to have this really high-pitched voice? Hi, oh, it's a top of my hat. Oh, it's ghost art real. Oh. He should have this really slow voice like, Oh, we are revolutionary, sir. I am the ghost of Christmas past, or something like that. I don't know, I just, I'd prefer that. But no, kids are afraid of scary voices, so everybody has to, has to have a very silly voice, and... Ugh. Although I do really love his line, I'm as light as a feather, I'm as merry as a schoolboy! Coupled with Rocky's hilarious expressions, like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Um, I really, really hate the trope in the CGI series where an engine has a huge accident and is just working perfectly fine. That's one of my biggest pet peeves for the entire series. This happens in James to the Rescue, it happens in Rocky Rescue, and probably a lot more, and it makes no sense at all. Like, Diesel literally fell off the track. Same thing with Paxton, too. I don't know if we ever saw him get back on the track, though, but... Diesel fell off the track, and he's just working perfectly fine. I mean... 
it wasn't like a terrible accident. Like it wasn't like James in the Adventure Begins where he got completely screwed up. But I mean, he slid off the track for a while, and I'm sure he got some damage. Who knows? Um, something I was very confused about: Why are Whiff and Scruff at the castle? All they did was dump literal shit on Thomas. I mean, Salty's there as well, and so was Emily, and they helped with the plan. So, oh, and Paxton as well. So I guess that makes a little bit of sense. But Paxton did, did bring the food, so whatever. So that's all I have to say about the episode. It was actually a lot of fun. Of course, it is the most, one of the most predictable stories ever. And they do that stupid trope where the main character can't see who's right in front of them. But they actually do it decently well here compared to other shows like... How would he know? How would Diesel know that that was Paxton talking through the pipes? Like he can't see him. Obviously, he stopped right before he got back on the main line, and I don't know. You could have told. You could have probably told who it was by the voice, but whatever. I really wish that the show switched over to using a longer runtime, but that would probably start dipping into filler territory, which I can fairly understand. And kids don't have a very long attention span. But yeah, overall, this is actually a really, really great episode. I forgot how good it was. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Very, very good. Alrighty, so snow place like home. Ha, do you get the pun? It's pretty funny. Um, So the Diesel's Ghost of Christmas had decent audio, but as soon as I heard this audio, I was like, oh, God, we're in for a terrible time again. The audio is really, really bad. Like, it's almost unbearable. It's like, oh man, this is like 240p quality. Um, but aside from that, the animation for the snow is really, really pretty. With the change in season 19 with the more, um, like more energetic, I guess, lighting, everything seems much more vibrant. And the snow looks very realistic and really, really nice. I like that a lot. Um, I haven't been noticing a lot, noticing it a lot recently, but Kevin has been quote quote bouncing. I believe this started around season seventeen and cranky or Kevin's cranky friend, but it doesn't really bother me too much. I didn't even really care about it until, or even really notice it until like 2017, 2018. I'm like, oh, Kevin was doing this before, but it kind of makes sense for his character. He's very fidgety, very hyper, and he's never shown to have a driver, so I guess it makes sense, but it's when everybody else does it that really bugs me. I mean, they clearly have people operating them, so they're probably getting all bounced around in the cab, and it's probably very annoying for them. I really, really like the character development from Victor. He's such a great character, and I really like how we get to see this new side of him. His bond with Kevin is so heartwarming, and I really love how he puts everything aside when he can't find him. That's that's very sweet of him, and I like that a lot. Um, a little minor thing, but this is the only time that we get to see anything remotely narrow gauge in this season. That being the depot, which is really a shame, because I love the narrow gauge engines, and they were done so dirty in CGI. Well, not so dirty, kind of dirty. But I just want more episodes of them. And I still think we were severely robbed of a Sir Handel story. But yeah, another really, really great episode. Um, Kevin and Victor's dynamic is very charming. And the snow falling animation is incredibly realistic. It feels very heavy, very dense, and very miserable. I'm going to give it another 8 out of 10. Very, very good. Alrighty, A Cranky Christmas. A bit of a weird story here. Um, kind of like Wild Water Rescue. It's kind of forgettable and feels weird, but whatever. I mean, it's also a bit repetitive as well. Thomas goes to the town hall, to the docks, back to the hall, back to the docks, back to the hall, and ends at the docks. It is kind of repetitive, but I do like how it fleshes out Cranky a lot more. This season does a very good job of showing different sides of characters, some being better than others. <coughs> Henry. Um, another thing, where are the engine sandboxes? Like, I know where Porter's is. I mean, it's obvious that Porter has sandboxes. But where are Thomas's sandboxes? Does he even have any? 
The workman is just shoveling sand into Thomas's splasher, which, for those who don't know, it's this little half arch thing right here, which is supposed to cover this wheel, but the wooden rod model is not that accurate, but that doesn't really hold anything to my knowledge, so whatever. Um, this era is kind of the reintroduction of slow-mo crashes, and they're honestly really cringy. Uh, I was like, oh man, you really did that? Ugh. Not a fan of it. They use it in this season quite a bit. They use it in The Great Race when Thomas is jumping the bridge. They use it in Rex's episode. They use it in Journey Band Soda. I believe they use it in season 21 as well. It's... Oh, it's annoying. Um, I really like how elegantly the mayor skates around while Sir Topham Hat is skating like a bumbling buffoon. I'll talk more about Sir Topham Hat, like, not trauma, but tormenting in the next episode, but it does get quite bad this season. So one more thing, um, I really, really love Cranky's line, and that's what I thought when I dropped it. He says it so nonchalantly, and it's really, really funny, but... Yeah, it's a perfectly fine Christmas episode. It's serviceable, that's the best word I can use. Perfectly fine, perfectly adequate, very forgettable, but it's not that bad. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. And now we come to the end. The Beast of Sodor. Oh lord, this is going to suck. Henry is such a wimp in this episode. I don't understand why they keep doing this, but it annoys the piss out of me that's like his default character for this series and i don't understand it although i do like the idea of pairing him up with spencer that was a very interesting choice and i really love the gag of well i don't love it but i i mildly i was mildly entertained by spencer hitting into the her hitting the brake fan um very often that was fine, I guess. Sorry, it's really, really late. I'm kind of tired. I just want to go to bed. Um, I really, really hate how this episode, it's basically torture Sir Topham Hat. You feel so bad for him, but I guess that's the point, because he wasn't being careful in the snow, but I'm just like, there's this one scene where he's sitting down in front of a fence and he's almost crying and he's just wiping in his eyes. And I'm like, I feel so bad for him. But then he gets chased by a bull. It's like, it's it's played off for laughs, but I don't want to laugh about this because we're made to feel sad for him. But whatever. Uh, we haven't really had an obvious um, Three Strikes episode in a while to my knowledge, but this one really stood out to me. Um, I'm glad they don't use it for every episode again, but they really just shouldn't use it at all, to be honest. Yeah, I don't have much to say for this episode. Henry's a wuss, and Spencer can get quite mean, and the making of Sir Topham Hat also gets really old really fast. It's gonna be a 4 out of 10 for me. Um, yeah. So if we want to reorder the episodes, um, they would go A Cranky Christmas, Snow Place Like Home, The Beast of Sodor, and Diesel's Ghostly Christmas. Interestingly, these um, first three episodes are put at like, let me look here, go to season 19. They're placed very early on in the season. Yeah, A Cranky Christmas is episode 5. That's kind of wild to me. Because the Christmas episodes are usually put around the end or towards like the middle of the season. So it's a bit strange how these three are put so far up. And then, let's see here, Diesel's Go See Christmas is technically a two-parter, and it's kind of just two episodes, so that would be episode 19 and episode 20. And I should have mentioned this when we were talking about season 18 a while back, but season 18 was the very last season to have 26 episodes until season 22. Because if you count Diesel's Go See Christmas as one part... Then that means um, season 19 only has 25 episodes, which is a bit interesting. But yeah, let's go on a brief little rant about season 19 because I didn't do that last week. Or last time I talked about it. Whenever that was, whatever. Whale of a tale. 
I hate how the season was released. This is the era where the distribution of our episodes gets really, really bad. So going by the UK release dates here, uh, we had four, the first four episodes released um, at the end of September 2015. Then we don't come back until January of 2016. And then that's when the Christmas episodes came out in the UK. And then we have a couple episodes in March, that being one, two, three, four, five episodes in March. Then we wait till July, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six episodes. Those are like the Start Your Engines episodes. Then Diesel's Go See Christmas in December. And then we have to wait till March 2017. To get the rest of the episodes here. And it's like, what? What is this distribution? I believe it fully wrapped up in the U.S. in 2016, I think, around that time. I could be wrong, but... The distribution is terrible. It took almost two years for the season to finally come out in the U.K. in its entirety, so... And season 20 had already been completed at this point, so... What? Whatever. Yeah, that's one of my main pet peeves of this season. It's just very corporate, really, and very convoluted. Yeah, um, this is actually not the worst release. I was going into this expecting for it to be not that great, but the first two episodes are really, really good. Cranky Christmas is decent, and then Beast of Sodor is really, really bad. But the rest, pretty good. I would watch them again. So, yeah, um, perfectly serviceable release. Nothing too crazy, but it's standard, I guess. Um, next week, we're taking a look at Tales from the Rails. Tales on the Rails. I can't see under my glasses on. Tales on the Rails. Cool. Um, very forgettable release. But after that, I start your engines, and I might be taking a little break because I still don't have it, so I'm going to have to order that when the time is right, but if there's not an episode in two weeks or an episode after Tales on the Rails, that's why, but yep, um, that's going to be it for me. I'm very tired again, but it's like 8.30, so I have an excuse to go to bed now, but yep. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you later. Bye.